Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The School Zone. Your all-in-one gaming channel that gives you tips, tricks, let's play walkthroughs, and best of all, facts and trivia about the gaming environments as we explore the game together. I can't tell you how long I've been waiting for Fallout 4. Well, I probably can, pretty much since uh, I finished New Vegas, which was what, uh, 2010, five years ago. Holy crap, time flies. <laughs> Has it really been that long? Well, what a build up, huh? You basically get an Assassin's Creed game and a Call of Duty game in some form or another every year. But five years? Actually, if we're talking straight Fallout 3, it's been seven long years. So no wonder all the buzz, huh? <laughs> Well, I think this will be worth the wait. If everything I've heard about the game lives up to the hype, then this will be the biggest game on my channel by a long shot. Best Soft never fails me. I started with Best Soft and now I'm back at it again, so I trust this game will rule. It's so funny because my three favorite franchises of all time, Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, and Fallout, all came out at the same time. Let me just say that if the next Dishonored game and the next Elder Scrolls game also came out in this Q4, my head would probably explode. <laughs> so thank goodness we're a ways off on those last two. Anyway, I'm probably going to juggle between all three of these biggies for the next few months, but I just had to release episode one of Fallout today. At least a good chunk of the intro. We'll see how much I can get through today, but this is one of those extensive open world games that will take us some time to do right and I wanna take my time with it and do it right. So I'm very appreciative that you guys decided to check out the first episode with me and hear some wicked Fallout factoids for this installment. This is also a collab video of sorts, so stay tuned for a little shout out to my buddy Nick in a bit and look out for many more Fallout 4 episodes in the weeks and months to come. So like I talked about what I did with Resident Evil recently, I like to set the mood before a really cool game. So I was listening to some 50s style jazz today and I bought a little bottle of Coke, like in an actual bottle so I could pretend I was drinking some Nuka-Cola. Yep, that's how nerdy I am. Actually, I did something even cooler. I bought some tonic water too and I poured half the Coke into a different container and filled the rest of the bottle back up with tonic water. Then I turned on this little black light that I have in the other room as I put up the Fallout 4 poster that came with the uh, the box. And the Coke actually glowed in the dark a bit. And I had some Nuka-Cola Quantum on my hands. <laughs> the glowing has something to do with the way that uh, the quinine in the tonic water reacts to ultraviolet light. I probably should have taken a picture of it before I drank it, but you can easily recreate that at home. Okay, enough of all that. Can't wait to jump into the game. So uh, let's do this. great-great-grandfather serving in the army wondered when he'd get to go home to his wife and the son he'd never seen he got his wish when the US ended World War II by dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki the world awaited Armageddon Instead, something miraculous happened. We began to use atomic energy not as a weapon, but as a nearly limitless source of power. People enjoyed luxuries once thought the realm of science fiction. Domestic robots, fusion-powered cars, portable computers. But then, 21st century. People awoke from the American dream. Years of consumption led to shortages of every major resource. The entire world unraveled. Peace became a distant memory. It is now the year 2077. 
We stand on the brink of total war. And I am afraid. For myself. For my wife. For my infant son. Because if my time in the army taught me one thing, it's that war, war never changes. Ha <laughs> ha nice. Little live action elements in that intro cutscene there. I'm very impressed. War never changes. You're gonna knock him dead at the Veterans Hall tonight, hun. You think? Absolutely. Now get ready and stop hogging the mirror. Right. So, um, yeah. Uh, looks like we are going to get to customize him here. And I am gonna do something that I wasn't gonna do until the next Elder Scrolls game. But uh, Bestsoft games in general give you just tremendous amounts of customization potential with the uh, characters' faces. I don't know how often you actually see their faces, but at least they let you do it. It's really cool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, do a little fast forwarding and uh, try to recreate what I look like <laughs> for you guys here with the character. We'll see if it works. I'm not sure it'll work or not, but... Uh, some of you guys have uh, emailed me privately and asked me why I don't show my face on camera. I actually answer that question uh, on the FAQ page on my website. So if you want to check that out, go to uh, schooledzone.com or just type in schooled.zone into the address bar. That'll get you there. Under the About tab, scroll down to FAQ and I'll answer your question right there. But uh, anyway, um, I'll see what I can do. Maybe play a little uh, 50s jazz in the background while I'm doing it. All right. So uh, be back in a second. Okay, <laughs> didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to. Uh, there's just some things that I couldn't tweak just right, but this is probably about the close as it gets. Um, I don't look exactly like that, but for an avatar, that's probably really damn close. So if you guys ever wondered what I look like, kind of like that. <laughs> probably 90% of you don't even give a crap, but you know. For that 10% of you who have asked me what I look like or whatever, you know, there you go. It's pretty close. Dapper dude. No. <laughs> okay, well, let's keep going. Okay, so uh, I'm hoping that little, uh, that little time lapse was as fun as I imagined. Uh, <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, I guess uh, if you wanted to play a female character, you could have probably customized her, but I wanted to uh, do that little thing for you. So let's explore around the house here. Mr. Han- oh, 
That's Mr. Codsworth. Let's go talk to him real quick. Ah, good morning, sir. Your coffee. 173.5 degree Fahrenheit. Brewed to perfection. And today's <laughs> newspaper just delivered. <laughs> Look at that jet coming out from underneath him. I can't imagine that's uh, safe with toddlers around and furniture, but uh, let's talk to him. Hey, Codsworth. Enjoy your coffee, sir. <laughs> I remember a version of him in uh, previous games. Let's go check out the fridge. There we go, the Nuka-Cola. Let's, let's see if we can activate it. Nuka Cola, oh, ice cold. Hmm. You know, I was nervous at first, but Codsworth's really good with Sean. Ah. We must be, uh, we must have a kid in the next room. Ah, so we finally have some Salisbury steak in the game. Saddle up Salisbury steak. Graded A+. Plus. Long time staple of the Fallout series. So what is Salisbury steak anyway? Well, if you've never had it, um, it's not exactly steak. It's more like meatloaf made of beef, pork, and some filler products, which is all pressed into a steak shape and uh, usually smothered in gravy. It was uh, invented by Dr. Salisbury, uh, that's the name. He was an American uh, physician in the late 1800s, I believe. It's probably that salesman. He comes for you every day. One of those uh, easy storage foods, <laughs> so to speak. Oh, there's a dude at the door. Yeah, uh, you can interact with almost everything. Look at that. Sugar bombs. Sugar bombs. 100% daily value of sugar. <laughs> Should we make him wait? <laughs> Look at him. Come on, just answer the door and he'll go away. Nah. Let's make him wait. Let's go check out the kid real quick. Codsworth. Now, don't you touch the laundry. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Oh, look at that. Gucci goo. <laughs> you know he's not going to give up. <laughs> Why don't you go answer the door, Codsworth? Don't worry about the dishes. That's my job. I know it's just going to lead to nuclear war. Codsworth. Oh, look at that. I wonder if you actually play this guy or if you play Sean. I wonder what Sean will grow up to be. Huh, okay. Maybe you are him. Oh, so many things to activate. Oh, can I sit down? So what kind of decor are we looking at here exactly? You know, the whole style of Fallout and all that kind of thing? Well, it looks as if it's supposed to be modeled after the period between the mid-1950s to the mid-1960s. The name of that style isn't so simple as to just say vintage. It actually has a name. It's often referred to as mid-century modern. And it looks like here they've also mixed in some uh, kitsch styles and some retro futurism. You'll also notice a bit of that 50s Americana diner vibe going on as well as uh, a lot of pop art that's sort of reflective of that uh, J.R. Dobbs character from the Church of the Subgenius. Especially with some of the posters of the salesmen who uh, kind of look like Ward Cleaver. <laughs> Good old USA. Merka. <laughs> Although that's not exactly what a flag looks like in this universe. I could do a whole video on the artistic styles of Fallout, but it, but it definitely sets the scene. There's no doubt about that. One of the things I've always uh, admired about the Fallout series. Are you going to get the door? All right, let's get the door. Good morning, vault calling. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Nice to find you, sir. You can't begin to know how happy I am to finally speak with you. I've been trying for days. It's a matter of utmost urgency, I assure you. Urgency? What's so important? Why, nothing less than your entire future. If you haven't noticed, sir, this country has gone to heck in a handbasket. 
if you'll excuse my language. The big kaboom is... It's inevitable, I'm afraid. And coming sooner than you may think. If you catch my meaning... Now, I know you're a busy fellow, so I won't take up much of your time. Time being a... Uh, a precious commodity. I'm here today to tell you that because of your family service to our country, you have been pre-selected for entrance into the local vault. Vault 111. But there's room for my entire family, right? Of course, of course. Minus your robot, naturally. In fact, you're already cleared for entrance. It's just a matter of verifying some information. Don't want there to be any holdups in the unforeseen event of <laughs> total atomic annihilation. <laughs> Won't take but a moment. Tell me more about this vault. Oh, it has all the amenities of the modern home, I assure you. Not to mention total protection from nuclear radiation and hostile mutants. A better future underground. It's not only our mission, it's our passion. Well, one thing's for sure is that the uh, dialogue exchanges are, are just superb compared to past games, as you'd probably imagine. All right, well, we know it's coming, so let's say yes. Sure, let's do it. Splendid! Splendid. Now, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Gotcha. This is where you get to pick stuff. All right. Well, let's check these out. I remember from previous games, you fill up on your inventory pretty quickly. So I don't know about the melee attacks, but how much you can carry makes a huge difference. So we'll come back to that one for show. Perception, Sixth Sense, Accuracy. Oh, Accuracy. Okay, we'll definitely come back to that. All right. Well, okay. So, Health. If we play it sneaky and strategic, we probably don't need a whole lot of health. And, you know, I usually don't do a lot of sprinting because I'm sort of checking out the environment for things to school. So we may not put a lot of points into that. Better prices when you barter. Okay, we'll have to put a few points there. Okay. All right. So that's kind of like endurance. I don't need to level up super quickly, but we'll put a few points in there. Normally, intelligence is something I would rack up, you know, being in a school zone and all. But uh, agility, I think, is one that I'm going to just go really high on because uh, it affects your ability to sneak. You know me, if you've been watching the school zone, that's my favorite thing is stealth. Luck. Now, luck is a fun thing in the Fallout series. Good fortune is sort of undefinable, but at least they tell you a recharge rate of critical hits. So, okay, decisions, decisions. All right, so let's, uh, let's definitely put at least five points there. At least four points there. Maybe two points there, three points there, three points there, at least five points there. Okay, so. Hmm. All right, so I may have to go this route just so we can carry a whole bunch of stuff because I may not have the charisma to barter, but when you have a whole bunch of stuff to sell, you actually can make more money. And you know me, I like to loot too, so let's go with that. Oh, I must name my character. Where do you name him? Name him right here. Okay. Well, uh, why don't we just name him Paul for now? <laughs> Good enough. Wonderful. That's everything. Uh, just gonna walk this over to the vault. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. Um, thanks again. Hey, it's peace of mind. That's worth a little paperwork, right? For you and Sean, no price is too high. <laughs> 
Good answer. <laughs> I have my moments. Yep, yep. Okay. Hmm. More the same. I think he needs some of that paternal affection you seem to be so good at. You heard Codsworth. Go on. Okay. <laughs> She's like, you do it, husband. <laughs> How are the two most important men in my life doing? Spin the mobile a bit. He loves that. Hey, how's my little guy? Much better now, huh? Listen, after breakfast, I was thinking we could head to the park for a bit. Weather should hold up. Ah, sounds fun. Yeah, sounds like fun. Sir, Mom, you should come and see this. Codsworth, what's wrong? Followed by, yes, followed by flashes, blinding flashes, sounds of explosions. We're uh, trying to get confirmation. What? Hey, Codsworth. Lost contact with our affiliate stations. Listen. We do, oh, no. we do have, we do have coming in. That's um, confirmed reports. I repeat, confirmed reports of nuclear detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. My God. Oh my God. We, we need to get to the vault now. I've got Sean. Let's go. Oh wow. Starts right away, huh? Residents of Sanctuary Hills, if you are registered, evacuate to Vault 1. You jump in the car? Nope. Oh, wow. Look at that. So there's loud alarms going on. Uh, actually have a specific name. They're called Civil Defense Sirens. They're sometimes referred to as Air Raid Sirens, if, you know, if there's like an airplane attack. But since they can also be used for tornadoes and incoming nuclear strikes, they're uh, just called Civil Defense Sirens. I think they still exist today, but they've been largely supplanted by the uh, National Emergency Alert System, which, you know, can reach people through TV, phone, and radio. Man, I just want to appreciate the environment, and we just got to keep running. You still there? Where are you? Well, there she is. Oh, wow. Huh. This is crazy. You can't stop me. Okay, okay. I'm reporting this! If you're in the program, step forward. Otherwise, return home. Dang. Look at that. That dude's ready to kill anybody. <laughs> Are you registered? We need to get in. We're on the list. Infant. Adult male. Adult female. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Good luck, ma'am. Thank God help you us all. You two, follow me. Come on. What's going to happen to all those people outside We're the gate? We're doing everything we can. Now keep moving. Dang, imagine if this really happened. This would be crazy. Oh, look at that. Wow. It's a little tilt rotor action going on. Is it going to land? Oh, that was pretty sweet. Can we get on it? Nope, can't get on it. Okay. Step on the platform in the center. Sir, I need to operate the elevator. Get out of the control. Alright. I just keep running everywhere where they don't want me to go because I don't want to go up here because I know what's gonna happen now. Alright, that's it. Send it down. Almost there. We're gonna be okay. I love you. Both of you. We love you too. Oh my god! Holy <laughs> Can you imagine? You better descend that thing. Hold on! Go, go, down, Jesus, that's gotten it close. Holy goodness. Okay, that was too close for comfort. God, I have to imagine some of the fallout made it down that shaft, man. We did it. We made it. We're okay. Everyone, please step off the elevator and proceed up the stairs in an orderly fashion. No need to worry, folks. 
We'll get everyone situated in your new home. Vault 111. A better future underground. So we just... Yes, up the stairs. I can't believe it. If we left a minute later... No, we'd no. all be... Don't get caught up thinking about that. You're safe now. Everyone, just head up these stairs and through the door there. Okay. Well, we probably have just a tiny little break here where I can give you some information about the uh, cutscene and some of the uh, elements that we just experienced. So, uh, yeah. We'll get everyone through this as quickly as possible. Just head up the stairs. <laughs> so they mentioned uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Hiroshima and Nagasaki are both cities in Japan. Hiroshima is on the main island, and Nagasaki is on the southernmost island of uh, Kyushu. Hiroshima was actually the first city in history to be hit by a nuclear bomb, August 6, 1945. It was a, a uranium bomb that they codenamed Little Boy, which uh, may have lent some inspiration to the Little Boy logo for the Fallout games. I'm not positive about that, but Nagasaki was the second in history and thankfully the last so far that's hit an actual populated city in the world. It was hit three days later on August 9th. Uh, and uh, that one was a plutonium bomb that they codenamed the Fat Man, which is probably why they renamed the nuke gun in previous Fallout games that. I'm not sure the exact difference between a uranium bomb and a plutonium bomb other than uh, different radioactive elements. I'll have to do some research on that. I think plutonium bombs are deadlier because they cause more fallout, but hey, if anyone knows the answer to that, leave a comment in the After School Club, which... If you're new to the channel, is the code name for the comment section down below. So I could give you some down and dirty factoids about what exactly happens during nuclear war, but that's definitely a topic that deserves serious detail. So I actually reached out to my buddy Nick at All Our Questions to answer this one for you. You can click here to check out his awesome video. He will definitely school some facts for you on the topic as you get ready for more Fallout 4. I'll also put a link in the iCard above, so check that out. Very informative stuff. Okay, well, let's keep this party rolling. What do we do now? Everyone, just head up these stairs and through the door there. Overseer? Excuse me. Head inside. Just up the stairs there. All right, all right. Where, what's wrong with them? What? what what's going on? <laughs> well, we just had hey, nuclear war. Just wait a minute. Hey there. We'll be fine. As soon as the world stops spinning. I can imagine all these people are in shock. I mean, can you just can you imagine? Male. Female and good. Each of you take over there. Take a suit. Brand new vault suit. Yeah. Just step over to the table. Sir. Move along. <laughs> you gonna take your suit? Uh, thanks. What now? Just follow the doctor here. He'll show you where to go. All right, you three. Follow so these uh, famous jumpsuits that you see people wearing around the game aren't actually jumpsuits. Uh, jumpsuits are geared more for skydivers and jet pilots. Instead, these garments are actually called boiler suits. Sometimes you might hear them called uh, siren suits or just simply coveralls. It was uh, Winston Churchill that actually popularized them during the 1950s. And I actually talked about Winston Churchill during my Sniper Elite 3 series, so you'll have to check out that playlist if you want. few medical items we have to get through first. The bald suit is designed to be fashionable as well as comfortable. Prepared for the future, right? Whoa, look at these. Huh. Just step in here and put your vault suit on. Why? Hey, step into okay? the chamber whenever you're ready. Daddy's right here. And what, See? what, when, what for? Honey, could you help me? I see some cold mist uh, decontamination pod. Me? Hey, Vault Tech is here for you. Just Please follow your guide. Busy. Could you, um,. All right, I guess if this is decontamination, then let's let's do that. 
So decontamination, as probably most of you know, is the uh, process of removing harmful substances from a person, place, or thing. It can be from uh, disease exposure, chemical exposure, or radioactive exposure. Nuclear decontamination is one of the hardest to remove because of the uh, penetrating particles of radioactive substances. Low-level contamination can be remedied by uh, trashing the contaminated clothing and washing the skin with high-pressure cleaning fluids, but Whoa, they're freezing us. Without my permission. What? Oh, that that that's that's totally uncool. Wonder how much time has passed. This is the one here. Open it. Is it over? I'm okay. Almost. Hey, let me out. Damn, they're trying to take the baby. What? What? Do oh, oh, no, you don't. Oh, my God. They just shot my wife. Oh, my goodness. They're going to have to pay dearly. Reinitialized? Oh, my goodness. So they got us out of chronic stasis took the baby and put us back in that is trippy what is going on <laughs> i know i wonder how much time has passed now i, I bet the uh <coughs> but the kid is all grown up so cryogenics is the study of extreme low temperatures on really any objects it's uh, cryonics, that's the study of how to preserve humans and animals in stasis uh, with the hopes of resuscitating them someday. So when it says cr cryogenic pods, it should really be cryonic pods, but out of time. Wow. Can we, can we, can we see if she's still alive? Come on, come on, come on. Oh, God! Oh, damn. I'll find who did this, and I'll get Sean back. I promise. For sure. Wouldn't that be weird if, if he gets to meet his kid and his kid's older than him? Oh, I mean, I, I don't know any spoilers or anything. I'm just saying that that seems like a really trippy way to go. Okay. Well, we're probably supposed to run out of here at this point, but uh, I'm going to end the episode here so I have time to edit it. And uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Learned a thing or two. I had a lot of fun, even just with the intro. I can't even wait to dive deeper into this game. It's just going to be massive. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you guys like what you saw and you're new to the channel, then definitely check out the last series I did. That's the link on the left. The last episode I did, which in this case was Call of Duty, click on that link in the center. And if you want to learn more about the channel, then I have a playlist I call Homeroom Announcements, where I give you sort of thoughts and updates about the channel and uh, things past and things to come. And remember to check out Nick's channel, All Our Questions, where he answers your curious questions about the amazing world we live in. The link to his video about nuclear war is in the iCard above and the description below. So make sure you hit that like button if you learned something new today or if you just really enjoyed the video. Throw a couple comments down below and share the video and make sure you subscribe if you haven't. And with all that, we'll see you next time on The Schooled Zone. Stay smart.